Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Kurbatli again. This is my third video about the CMA program. In this video, I'm going to talk about the management accounting topics that are covered in the CMA program. And in my next video, I'm going to start the CMA program with a review of financial accounting. Okay, so managers perform certain functions, right? And these functions are planning, organizing, directing, and control. And we're going to see that the management accounting topics covered in CMA help managers perform these functions from a financial point of view. Okay? Uh, so these are the topics we're going to cover. Uh, managers care about a lot about costs, so we're, we're going to study costs and their behavior and cost accumulation and allocation. We will also need to study forecasting techniques to be able to project our sales and revenues and therefore develop a budget. Later on, we'll measure actual performance against the budgeted performance and that's various uh, variance analysis and we will have to attribute these variances to different business units based on their financial responsibilities and that's responsibility accounting. We'll also talk about transfer pricing. That's when a business unit sells to another business unit and has to set a price for the transaction. And we're going to talk about methods and techniques managers care about in their attempt to achieve efficiency. Okay, sorry. And that is control costs, right? and enhance business performance. And finally, we'll study internal control and internal auditing, and we'll understand the importance of these in managing risk, improving performance, and um, ensuring that your financial reports are reliable. Okay, so the first point we're going to cover is costs, types of costs and their behavior. We'll uh, discuss methods for estimating costs, including activity analysis, historical cost, benchmarking, and so on. We also need to understand how costs behave. Okay, so that uh, means whether they are fixed, and uh, no matter what production level we are, we, we are at, or whether they move in a proportional way to production, or contain both a fixed and a variable component. We'll also talk a lot about manufacturing costs and we'll categorize these into direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. We're going to study whether a cost is relevant for a decision or not. Okay, so we'll talk about relevant costs such as opportunity cost, incremental cost, and differential cost, and irrelevant costs such as sunk costs. And we're going to discuss where, uh, how to treat a cost whether to treat it as a product cost and capitalize it, or treat it as a period cost and expense it. We will also talk about the important of, importance of costs for planning, and here we'll discuss actual, normal, and standard costs. Then, after understanding the basic terminology and classes of costs, we're going to talk about cost accumulation and allocation. We'll discuss job order costing, process costing, activity-based costing, and life cycle costing, which are different methods of accumulating uh, costs by jobs, by departments, by activities, and so on. A major topic uh, in management accounting is overhead costs or indirect costs, also known as common costs. We're going to talk a lot about these and discuss how these costs can be allocated to different cost objects such as products and departments or business units. In this regard, we're going to discuss normal and standard costing, absorption various, uh, versus variable costing, and a joint product and byproduct costing, in addition to the allocation of common costs to department costs, to departments, sorry. Okay, and uh, here we discuss headquarter and service department cost allocation to business units. After that, um, and right before we go into budgeting, we need to discuss forecasting because we need an estimate. We need, uh, sorry, we need estimates for few, our future costs and revenues. And here we will learn techniques borrowed from statistics mainly, uh, including linear regression, time series analysis, learning curve analysis, expected value and sensitivity analysis. Using such methods, we'll be able to estimate our costs 
for example, annual uh, maintenance cost based on certain cost drivers, such as, as machine hours. We might also uh, use this technique, and this is regression, by the way, to um, estimate our future sales revenue based on our marketing expenses and so on. Okay, so once we develop this idea, we can move on to budgeting. So a budget is a profit plan. In, in, it includes target for both revenues and expenses. But most importantly, too, it has to fit within our strategic plan. So we need to develop this idea. And we need to talk about the process of budgeting. So we will discuss how, man, uh, how companies uh, should really involve as many people as possible, those who have expertise or those who will be executing the budget to get their knowledge and to motivate them to follow the budget. And then we're going to talk about the details of creating a budget, starting with a sales budget, moving on to a capital budget, production budget, all the way to developing a full set of pro forma or expected financial statements. We'll do all the number crunching. And this is a highly testable part of uh, the CMA. OK, so we have a budget. We're going and people start uh, performing the budget regularly. We're going to come back and see if they have been working uh, hard enough and achieving their goals and we will do this the first step is variance analysis we analyze variances for direct materials direct labor variable overhead fixed overhead and sales and we usually do it in comparison to flexible budget we'll develop this idea later on okay so we have the basic variance uh, numbers we need to understand who is responsible for what whether we have exceeded our uh, expectations or not or fallen short of them. We need to understand who's responsible for that. And here we have responsibility accounting. We will see how different units of the business can be classified as cost centers, revenue centers, profit centers, and investment centers based on their financial responsibilities. And we will learn additional performance measures uh, that are uh, used to measure the performance of these different units. Sorry, again. And we're going to talk about the balance scorecard, which includes both financial and non-financial measures for uh, the performance of different responsibility centers. OK, we'll discuss transfer pricing. That's when one division within the business sells to another division. And this division potentially sells to external customers. We will discuss the different methods that are used for setting the price, including the market price, variable cost, full cost, and so on. And we will discuss the factors that we need to take into account as we decide on the best method to use, including motivational factors, capacity factors, and tax factors. OK, then we move on to talk about certain methods and techniques that managers use to improve their uh, performance and efficiency of their operations. We need to understand them because as a management accountant, you may be called upon to give recommendations and do calculations of the performance of these methods and techniques. Okay, so we'll discuss uh, MRP versus just-in-time inventory systems, ERP systems, outsourcing, and so on. Okay. And then, finally, we move to internal control and internal auditing. So in internal control, we discuss the business needs for internal control, including risk management, operational effectiveness, reliable reporting and compliance, and the legal requirements, including the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2012 and the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Then we discuss the conceptual framework most commonly used in the development of internal control systems, and that is the COSO model. And we talk about how we um, develop a detailed internal control system, and as an application, we will talk about information systems and how we assess their risks and create controls for them. Okay, and internal auditing, we talk about the function of internal auditing and how it complements internal controls. What do internal auditors do specifically and the types of audits they perform, financial, compliance, and operational audits, and the auditing standards they follow. Thank you very much. That's the end of my third video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the details of the CMA program. 
starting with a review of accounting